What's up, YouTube? I'm Nick Householder. What you just saw may have looked like magic, but it's actually the application of a couple of simple aerodynamic principles. The most important thing you have to know is that I had a jet of air just off screen that you couldn't see. This is the exhaust hose off of a shop vac. It's just producing a jet of air that I'm using to manipulate the ball. The two aerodynamic effects that are in play here are the Kawanda effect and Bernoulli's principle. In the Kawanda effect, air has a tendency to stick to a curved surface as it flows over it. So, instead of this ball just sitting on the jet of air and the jet of air going around the ball and continuing to go straight up, as the ball kind of sits sideways in the jet, what happens is the air flows around it and then turns and goes in a different direction. Bernoulli's principle states that fast moving air has lower pressure than ambient air. As the ball tries to leave the jet, the ambient air pressure is higher than the pressure inside of the jet. So as long as it's still touching that jet, it's experiencing a lower force on that part of the ball. As a result, the ball moves in the direction of the lower force since there's higher force pushing on it from other directions. Imagine all your friends are standing around a giant ball and pushing on it together. If everybody's pushing the same amount, the ball doesn't go anywhere. But if there's somebody pushing a little less than everybody else, that's the direction the ball is going to move. Same thing's happening here, but it's a bunch of air molecules slamming into the side of the ball. To me, the coolest application of this is that it doesn't just work vertically, but you can also turn the jet and it will continue to support the ball on the air to find gravity. Another really interesting thing about this effect is that it works on different sized balls, and each ball behaves differently depending on its size and its mass. I think by far my favorite is this beach ball. It flies way higher than the other balls, and it's also oddly more stable. I feel like this is the perfect candidate for some kind of game. If you have an idea, let me know in the comments. Making this ball float here on the ground is kind of extra special for me because I took this ball on a zero G flight where they, you know, drop you in the air inside of an airplane and you get to experience weightlessness. It was amazing. And I got to do it with my two friends, Kevin Kohler, the backyard scientist, and Darren Dyke from Beyond Slow Motion. We were up there goofing around making this thing float in our hands. It was, it was pretty cool. We got to do it as part of a TV show we were working on called Street Science on the Science Channel. If you like the science demonstration, you're in luck. You're probably going to be seeing a lot more of these from me in the future and you're doubly in luck if you're going to Dragon Con this year. I'm gonna be at Dragon Con giving a talk, doing some hands-on science demonstrations that you can come and try out yourself, and I'll also be doing a presentation during the Solve for X Variety Show. All of this wouldn't have been possible without the help of the Midnight Science Club. They're an organization that houses the world's largest collection of science demonstrations, and they also create video content that's educational for kids in after-school programs and other things like that. I recently took a trip out to see them, see their facility, learn more about what it is that they do, and I think we're going to be working together a lot more in the future. If you want to see a sneak peek of some of the science demonstrations I'm going to be doing at DragonCon, check this out. I'm going to try to record all the demonstrations I do while I'm at DragonCon, so if you want to see those, you got to subscribe. So, you know, do that, uh, check out some of my other videos, and I don't know, like that smash button? That's how you say that, right? We'll see you soon.